I am a simp. Wee! Oh, don't, don't. I just feel like people are obsessed with controlling the person that they're with. Beard twins. <laughs> I'll tell you what amazing? gave me the ick. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lena, uh, which you might know if you've been here before, but even if you have been here before, you might not recognize this face. This is Craig, he is my boyfriend, Ooh. my partner in crime, uh, and also my employee. So we thought it would be fun to do a little kind of 2007 YouTube vibe Q&A and chat about a few things that you, like questions you've been sending us over on Instagram. Craig has um, accumulated the questions in a little notebook. Which says YouTube on it, by the way. Attention to detail. <laughs> Very thorough. Uh, and we're just going to answer them. Is that it? I think that's I think it. That's it. Right. Um, does anybody mind if I knit? Is it okay if I just, you know, just whip if out a you little... Must. If you must. I'm actually knitting these hats that I'm doing as part of a giveaway. So if you want to win this hat, I will leave the links to how you find out about that below. But I'm knitting these hats for you. What questions have you got for us, Craig? Okay, so these are accumulated from the stuff that people submitted to Lena on Instagram. And I've tried to pick out questions that came up quite frequently. So if you are someone that asked a question and we're not answering it, it's probably because you're the only one that asked it. So. <laughs> Nobody else wanted to know. <laughs> so we're going to start by getting the standard ones out of the way first. So... Favourite movies. I think that was directed Ooh. at me, but I think we should both answer favourite movies. I'll tell you what. Why don't we guess each other's favourite movies? Oh no, okay. Oh, you all know, mine's obvious. Okay, it's like, Craig's favourite film is The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, but he doesn't watch it very often because it upsets him. <laughs> so, That's so it's not the most frequently is, watched film, but it is his favourite. <laughs> I'd say, basically, that's my favourite from, like, my teenage years. Mm -hmm. um, I think my other favourite from my teenage years is Submarine. Mm -hmm. Still holds up. I feel like I had loads when I was a teenager that I loved that don't hold up now. I'm like, what the hell? Why did I like mm. this? I think my favourite from the past few years is actually 1917, which is a little bit of a different vibe <laughs> to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. No cheer for Craig. <laughs> but it does indeed slap. Only in death and despair. <laughs> What's my favourite film? Film? I mean, you've got several, haven't you? Sister Act 2, Julie and <laughs> Julia, The Holiday. You're missing a really big one. Um, it's very embarrassing. Sound of Music? Yes. <laughs> <Is laughs> That's that not set? so much a film, more of a movement <laughs> or a religion. An it's experience. more of a state of mind. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a state of mind than just the merely a film. state of mind being film. irritating. <laughs> Craig's never seen The Sound of Music, and actually I have banned him from watching it. He's not allowed to because I actually couldn't bear to see his reaction. <laughs> like, it would give me the massive ick. It's not worth the relationship <laughs> to see him disparage. <laughs> I tell you what gave music. me the ick was when you did that. You, you, I'm not. I don't know what scene it is, but there was a scene that you uh, replicated from The Sound of Music where you. Oh the wee. Oh don't don't. I had to edit that and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I had one hand on my suitcase thinking about packing it. <laughs> but no, stay strong, stay strong. Please don't do that again. If you don't love me at your best, my best, you don't deserve me at my best. And that was my best. <laughs> Next question. Sure about that one. My favourite books. Uh, your favourite books. You've got a lot of favourite books. Mm. So um, it's going to be kind of hard. I think non-fiction, motherhood, Sheila Hetty. That's very good. The amount of times... That I have. Have we also have we explained that I edit these videos? No, that's why the question, the answers to the questions might be in the wrong order. Oh, okay. Well, that. we'll we'll answer questions about me working for Lena later on. But um, in case you didn't know, I edit these videos. The amount of times that I have had to find a graphic for Sheila Hetty Motherhood, I think, exceeds <laughs> every other. Just book have it that saved to your desktop now. You're like drag and drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's your favourite non-fiction. Mm -hmm. Are you correct? Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Favourite fiction. You used to bang on about a book called Geek Love, but I don't know whether yeah. that's your favourite anymore because I don't you know don't... if it's my favourite. I, I think Wicked's to buy my favourite. Like... Okay. You just bought it. That was my... Oh, sorry. I was supposed to be guessing. Okay, sorry. You can do that again if you want. No, no. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wicked's your favourite and Geek Love used to be your favourite. But then I offered to buy you like a really special edition of it that I found online and you were like, ah! And I was like, it's your favourite book, is it? <laughs> would you say you have other favourites, or would you say that that's a definitive winner? Wicked. Um, there's a climate change book that's non-fiction that okay. I go on about a lot. We have the weather? Yes. I'd say that's probably he a favourite as well. There's, yeah, and then after that, everything, like, then we just open up a pit of books. <laughs> 
but it wouldn't be fair to ask you to <laughs> name each one. Yeah. Your favourite books. You love the Brian Jakes books, which I love them as well growing up. They're Red Wall, the series. I actually got so, some. <laughs> some of you prepared earlier. I used to read them from the library, but I only read the ones that my library had, so I didn't actually know there were as many as there are. I really liked them when I was younger because of the illustrations. When I was in year four, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, my school had some, and I was like, oh, these are sick. Anthropomorphic animals. That's like my whole thing. How would you describe them to people who don't know what they are? Medieval England, but it's animals instead of people. And they all have amazing regional accents. <laughs> yes, so ba based on the type of animal, they have a different British regional accent. So, for example, moles speak like they're from the West Country. Mice speak like they're Scousers. Hares speak with received pronunciation. Mm. Um, it's kind of like if Narnia and the Lord of the Rings was told through the eyes of animals. So mm. there are like battles, but there's also just lots of calm cottage core vibe. We're yeah. going to have a feast now and we're going to describe everything that's on the feast table in great detail. <laughs> yeah, I also have a tattoo because I really like it, which isn't yeah. any specific character. It's just sort of inspired by Red Yeah, Wolf, I'd but... say that's like one of our couple's drunken rant of choice things is that these books have sold absolutely millions of copies and they're really, really famous, but they're being erased. <laughs> like, people don't remember they're, them. They're just not in Waterstones shops. don't stock them like they stock all of the other ones. And I think it's because he doesn't have, like, a legacy brand, like an estate that's, like, paying for Maybe. things to stay in the public consciousness. And he was, like, quite a working-class writer. And I'm yeah. like, why do people remember C.S. Lewis, but they don't remember Brian Jakes? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Right, okay, uh, next one. There's lots of questions about me moving to the Midlands and leaving London. How did I find the move? How did we decide on this area? Um, Should we give some context for that as well? Because that kind of links into like you working with me. Sure, yeah, go for it. Um, the very, very short truncated story is that uh, Craig worked in marketing in the charity sector and I worked in marketing and whatever, producing in publishing. And then a little thing called the Panini happened and we got locked in our very, very tiny uh, flat with barely, I think the windows opened about that much, didn't they? <laughs> we were on the top floor of a block of flats. And we just thought, screw this for a box of frogs. <laughs> and after about 10 months, we left London and we thought we were just gonna go for a little bit and we ended up not returning because we realised that one person's wage in London, which is what I eventually started making from working on the internet, was actually two people's wages if we didn't go back to London. <laughs> um, so Craig was working in the charity sector and it became very, very hard. And um... Well, yeah, the, the charity that I'd been quite happily working for for about five years sadly folded. And then I moved on to a different charity, which was different and... They didn't offer you a remote contract either, so... Yeah, they started I mean, wanting to get you to come back into London and we were like, how much money is it going to cost us for you to keep working this job? Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't going to go massively into the details of it, but just, okay. no, it's okay, well, let's, let's crack on with it. Like, um, I mean, I was like, I will accept this job, but I'd like to do four days a week and I'd like to work a remote contract. And they were like, did you mean five days of work in four days? And did you also mean a remote contract until we decide actually it's time for you to start coming back into London and then start sort of twisting my arm to come? Yeah, it was a bit it dodgy. Was a bit, it was a bit weird. Meanwhile, Lena's channel, channel started doing really well and it just made sense. I think we're kind of answering another question here as well, which mm. is like, how do we start working together? But it kind of made sense that like we had met through YouTube because we were fans of each other's YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. We also met at a YouTube convention. You were looking to get an editor yeah, and Craig's really good at editing videos, as you hopefully have noticed, because he's been editing them for about three or four years now. Uh, yeah, it just made sense. And it's worked pretty well. I think there's some more questions about, like, how we work together and how we get on together later on, so we can mm. answer them in a little bit. But meanwhile, whilst all this is going on, we've left London. We moved to Derby initially because your friend let us live in his gaff, mm -hmm. which was very nice of him. It was fine, but there was a pandemic on and some reason it just felt like too far away like I'm from the southeast and we were pretty much like Derby's like 
sort of the last bit of the Midlands that you're in before you get to the north, right? Yeah, I mean, vote below. Is Derby in the north or is it in the Midlands? It's, it's, the Derby it's... is not in the north, but it's <laughs> it's in the northern part of the Midlands, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And it just, for me, it just felt too far. So we came down a little bit because we were mm. like, we need to find somewhere that we want to live that's not London. Yeah. Um, and your family are from Coventry. Mm. And so we're near Coventry now. And it just seemed to fit a bit better it's like not that far on the train to London mm. and I do think a big part of it was that we wanted to be within like a day's trip of London like we wanted to be able to go in for the day and it not be a big disaster or yeah, a big trip absolutely. absolutely so this was like the, the closest we could get <laughs> financially really yeah and, and, um, if and you just go down the train lines and you're like look at the house prices you're like this is this is where we're at and it's great I'm glad that we did that yeah, absolutely. I think Derby would have been a bit too far for now. We don't, we might not want to live near London forever, but we just, we felt like London had been ripped from us a little bit, didn't we? Yeah. We, were a bit, we weren't quite ready to leave London, so being near to London In was increments important. increments, we'll leave. And well, also, it, we, it's important for us to live near London because if this doesn't work out, because there's the internet, it's not that like we have much security, then mm -hmm. it would be good to live near the kind of industries that we worked in before, in case yeah, we yeah. do need to do that again. Yeah. So that's a big consideration as well. Mm. Yeah, I think that we're kind of like in the sweet spot now. I think also that I do prefer it to the southeast for context. The south, when I say the southeast, I grew up in a place called Crawley, which is pr pretty much the midway point between London and Brighton, just in case you're interested. And I think what's different with the Midlands is that there is like history everywhere here. In the in the pocket of the southeast that I grew up in, there was like market towns that were historical and Brighton which is I think is like a Victorian town, wealth city, but there's just castles and abbeys and oh here's like an ancient ruin the origin of which we don't know <laughs> on your doorstep which I think is really which cool. Which you can just go all... and eat chips on, yeah. <laughs> on a night out. I thought that was really normal growing up. I was just like, I'm just going to sit on this like medieval ruin of a cathedral while I eat my chips while drunk at 2am. Like it yeah. just it's yeah. So there, do. there's a there's a lot more history here, and th as I say, there is history in the southeast, but not not in the way that there is here. Also, loads of canals here. Love a canal. Love a canal. Walk. The Midlands love a canal, and that wasn't really something that I, I saw much of growing up. I so. personally love a canal walk because you don't need to make any decisions about like where you're going, and you never get lost, and you can just <laughs> chill out and just walk. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I, I, on the whole, I prefer it, but it took a it, it took a little while to sort of get used to being in a in a in a new place I think but yeah. but now I've been here for a while I'm like <laughs> I'm from the Midlands, baby. <laughs> I do think it was funny when you when we were walking around when we first lived here and people just kept saying hi to us and then you were like, why are they saying hi? <laughs> and I'm like, they do that here. Also, you have to thank the bus driver <laughs> and stuff what, like that. What, I'm like... What I find weird is that when I'm on a jog here, like other joggers will sort of acknowledge you and say hi, which never used to happen when I was growing up. Yeah, it's jogging just, there is Crawley. like very subtle cultural differences. Yeah, like little things and how I'm like, are we, are we going to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> we did have a huge list of areas that we'd like to live in when we first started looking for houses and then we slowly went through the average house prices on Zoopla. And this is where we <laughs> ended up. Like, yep, we can afford there. Edinburgh would have been cool. Yeah. We've been priced out. I'd love to I'd love to live in Edinburgh. Okay, um this is a, a, one of the questions I had later but because we started talking about working together I thought we could just get this one out of the way because I think this yeah. was probably the thing that people asked about the most which was how does the relationship of partner and employee work? Is it difficult or easy? And also well. like, how and why did you start working together? I think we kind of explained that with the previous question, right? Like it just we were It makes right, sense. Right place at the right time. I I would want, I was looking to hire somebody with Craig's skill set. Craig had the same skill set. And I was also um, like, I need to switch job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and it's also like so much easier for me to be able to give the footage or, and like ask. There is a lot of like, because my job is just revolved around my personal life and my intimate stuff. Like it's very, it's much better for me to give the raw footage to somebody I trust and know. Mm. Especially if I do like outfit change stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there's, there's, you yeah. have to really trust somebody for them to be a video editor and, and all the other stuff that you do around your job that's to do with money and like other responsibilities. It feels much better for me to trust you with it yeah. than anyone else. I don't know if I would. Yeah. And also you can tell me if something's wrong. Yes. And I think that's something that Lena has that, okay. The thing that I think that has been the biggest learning curve for me is understanding that Lena is sometimes not going to ask for exactly what she wants. <laughs> so I think what uh, I struggled with, particularly at the beginning, is that Lena w w wants to be a cool boss, but 
as a result will sort of give me a vague instruction. So I'll sort of try to use my initiative and fill in the blanks. And then Lena's like, oh no, not like that. And so I used to, I found that really difficult to begin with. And now I've sort of got to insist that Lena's very direct and very clear about like, I want it specifically yeah. like this. And that's okay that you want it specifically like this because it's gonna be less work if you just ask me the first time around. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to be a cool, cool mum, but like about very specific things, I'm actually kind of anal. <laughs> Weird what sentence. Yeah. That's not how I would have phrased it, but sure. Yeah, my little rant is that like, I know people would struggle to work with their partner and we struggle with it sometimes, but I think sometimes that place comes from either somebody always having a really healthy workplace where they never fell out with anybody at work or they never felt like things were awkward at work or not having ever had that, not, not having worked in, in a inverted commas normal workplace. And I personally have found it really hard to work with people that I don't know very well or can't get to know very well for professional reasons and therefore we can't hash things out when there's a problem there's a lot of passive aggressiveness or like misunderstood things and crossed wires that you can't hash out with people in a formal especially British workplace <laughs> like you don't share how you feel when you're working together so when you're in a relationship and you've already gained the skills of knowing how to argue and how to resolve things and knowing what upsets people and what doesn't upset people and how to address problems it's actually kind of a shortcut I think it's kind of a great life hack because you or we already know how to argue <laughs> and I already know that you really care about me and you want to resolve something whereas like previous bosses or, or colleagues like they haven't cared about me and I probably haven't cared enough about them I think so the re like... resolution mo motivation isn't there we're not in competition yeah yeah I, I, I think that kind of like bleeds into another question that we had about like sustaining long-term relationships which mm -hmm. is we, we'll talk a bit more about it later but it's just like we both know that we want the same thing and um, we trust that like, I'm not going to sabotage you and I'm not going to be like, well, I'm not doing any work now because you've told me that it was wrong. Or, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think that we trust each other and also we both want and need this to work. So obviously, like, Lena is in charge. This is Lena's business. And so being told what to do, it can be annoying and it can, like, I, I don't know, some people struggle with being told what to do. Sometimes I struggle with it too. But there are ways around that that we have found that have made it easier for me to basically like be bossed around, which you know, that <laughs> which makes I'm sound not awful, very good at like, bossing job, around. Right? Yeah, that's I'm not very good at bossing you around either. So I think we've worked it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, for example, we 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 largely communicate on like WhatsApp and email and stuff, mm. right? We obviously also have meetings face to face and stuff. Yeah, and we chat about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. But in in terms of like when Lena watches a video that I've edited and she's like, appalling, redo the whole thing. <laughs> Which has never happened. For some reason it feels softer when it's sent to me via email. And that way, if I'm like, fucking can't believe she's asked me to do <laughs> that. She? Then I can sort of boil by myself without, because I we we found that when you gave me the changes face to face, mm. it would like upset me a, a bit. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would hit a nerve. But for some reason, I don't know what it is. When it's sent via WhatsApp or email, just doesn't bother me in the same way. So that I I do get it. There are little things like that. But I get, I guess my point here is like there are always right ways around it. You know, we work in separate rooms in the house. We try mm. to have one of us going out one yeah. of us staying in and that's that was a problem because in it was almost the opposite problem as well because we're really good friends we're like best friends we just chat all day so we'd be sitting by each other next to each other at our desks and be like have you ever thought about death or like <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of these trainers or like oh my god have you just heard they've called a general election and like we just yeah. chat a lot and then we get frustrated at each other because one of us would be trying to focus and the other one wouldn't know or we'd both we feel a bit deflated deep focus, don't yeah we? we're both that... deep focus people we're yeah. not like oh just do a little task do another task we're very either deep focus or not focusing at all yeah um so we decided that we had to work in separate rooms which is f totally fine like craig works in our bedroom and i work in the office mm. or one of us goes out for the day um which i like because i like a little treat so i'm always <laughs> like i'll be the person to go out because i would quite like a muffin she, right now she loves a little treat i love a little treat <laughs> so yeah I, I, in, in conclusion i think that Yes, it's difficult, but we trust each other and we're on the same page. And there's always, like, if you want to resolve it, you can resolve it. I think that we both want to resolve it. Mm. And yeah, yeah, we, we, we want it enough to figure out solutions. And there's, yeah. there's, for every single thing, there's always been a solution. So, a friend made a very good point to me that 
everybody used to work with their immediate family and partners like a long time ago like it wasn't weird everybody yeah. had like a family trade or they'd like do stuff together or one do you know what I mean like that was very very normal mm. and there you do have shared goals because you're paying for the same house or you're you're paying you're trying to get money for the same meal or something like that and it's yeah. always almost made me reflect on like how individualistic the workplace is now and why that might not be best for everybody. I think for some people it's really good to have like a work and life separation, but I actually find it a little bit less fizzy for my brain to do this. Mm -hmm. And also that I'm not having to perform as much. And I, I, I've had loads of amazing colleagues where I felt very, that like we've become like best friends, but there's always an element of performance in the workplace and like going on, you know, you have a little cry on the bus to work and then you have to be like, okay, I'm in a meeting now. And yeah, being able and to it's... turn up to work, like, in the mood that you're genuinely in and, like, ask for what you need. Yeah, is which you're great at, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I feel like some mornings I just wake up and I'm not in a good mood. And mm. I can say to Lena, I'm really sorry, I'm in a bad mood. Nothing personal, I'm not cross yeah. with you or anything. I just, for some reason, I'm in, a, in a, I'm in a bad mood today. So do you think I can just, you know, have some time by myself? Yeah. And you're like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but does it mean that you'd, we'd have to like turn up to big meetings and stuff and now I just feel like we're flexing about the fact that we like our lives but I feel like there's less of a front that you have to put up yeah from the Instagram um, replies that you mm -hmm. got like the questions you got I think a lot of people were like how the f how do you like I yeah a lot never, of people like, find and, it weird and so I, I guess I'm just trying to explain like I, I don't think it's a flex it's just it, it's just like here's how it works yeah <laughs> you know, here's how we're able to make it work we want it to work and we figured out a way and we do wind each other up and sometimes we just need five and sometimes one of us needs to go out to work at the library or a cafe or whatever it is but it always oh did you just make that yes did you do that all I by just yourself? finished my hat <laughs> it's your hat it could be your hat okay so one of the questions was about deep lena law and i just thought about <laughs> i thought about one okay which you can tell me uh, if you don't if you're not comfortable with me sharing it but mm. lena really likes when i'm a little bit patronizing sometimes <laughs> it, you know within in a feminist yeah, way yeah yeah like if i did it out and about lena would be like what are you doing but sometimes <laughs> if lena's finished making something i just go <laughs> i go did you just make that i'll be like did yeah you make it i did Wow, aren't you clever? I am clever. And, and I swear there's a little bit of Lena that's like, mm. it's like yeah. <laughs> so. I just like a little fuss. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do get these. <laughs> get off me. Lena says that she doesn't like the show South Park. She's always maintained that she hates South Park. And for the first like three years of our relationship, I didn't tell her that like every other joke that I make is actually just a South Park reference. And Lena was like, ha! Ah! Like found me absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And then on like year four, I was like, you know, this catchphrase of mine, this catchphrase of mine, and these things I always say, they're all South Park references. <laughs> the and you humor seem to that find made it funny me find in, fall in love with me is actually <laughs> ripped from a TV show. So like, no, I don't like South Park. It's not for me. It's not very funny. Apparently, she does. Here's, here's my theory. I don't like most other fans of South Park. You know when you, like, you think that That's you don't fair. like something, but it's actually you don't like the fandom around it, and I just find most men who want to talk to me about South Park deeply annoying. <laughs> kind of like me and the Taylor Swift fandom. Maybe, yeah, although I don't think you really interact with it yeah. enough to make a decision. Well, the stuff that I've seen, I'm like, a bit annoying. But her music's okay. I don't mind her music. But, but that's the like, thing. Sometimes you just, you know, it's the fandom that represent the thing isn't necess isn't the same as the thing. Yeah, that makes sense. But also, I think your delivery is funnier than set on South Park. Oh, thank you very much. And also, the Book of Mormon is still the worst show ever. Don't go see I've, it. I've not seen that, so I can't it. comment. But um, <laughs> should we talk? I feel like we've spoken about our relationship a bit. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on sustaining a long term relationship and keeping it interesting. This is sort of a difficult question to answer because. I think when I try and think about, like, what, what is it about us that's just so great? It's <laughs> just so special. <laughs> it's difficult because it's just, it's just, like, easy, and it feels like a really crap answer. But in previous relationships that I've had, I think I presumed that relationships had to have a lot of struggle in them, mm. you know? Notebook, um, notebook vibes. Yeah, uh, and that everyone's always like, oh, it's not easy, it's always hard, and I'm like, mm, it's pretty easy pretty easy now mm. I, I, I don't know and again that's uh, it's not a flex it's just uh I have been with people that I have really liked and struggled to get on with and find common ground with when it comes to like resolving conflict and whatever and then I have been with Lena 
who, by the way, I also really like. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we just want, uh, it goes back to the same reason why the, the working together works, because we just want the same things. We trust each other. We've taken the time to get to know each other. I don't, I don't feel like we need a, like a campaign or an effort to keep things interesting because I'm interested, you know? And mm. I think it's quite simple, really. Like, you, you, you see so much stuff on, on Instagram and stuff about, like, oh, relationship tips and how to keep things interesting. And for us, it's just, like, it's just not that deep. Like, I think it's <laughs> I also... I trust this, that you like me. You know, like, you, know, like, you know, like, your partner kind of becomes your family and you don't think, like, how do you keep your family relationships interesting? Like, how do you... Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no other relationship we have that expectation of keeping things interesting. You don't think... Somebody isn't like, oh, I've had this is my best friend, I've had them for 30 years. And they go, oh, how did you stay interested in each other? It's like, well, you're best friends. Like, it's not... Yeah. I don't know. So I get it in some ways, but I don't... I also just don't get it. And I think that there's loads of people that you can fall in love with but not actually be very compatible with in a relationship setting. And mm. I think that's a very confusing distinction to make that I've struggled with in the past. Yeah. But I think you can love somebody and not have the same relationship style as them. And I think we have very similar relationship styles. I think the hardest thing for us is that because of our because we're around each other a lot and just because of the way we are if one of us is in a bad mood then it really ruins the other person's day as well and if one of us is struggling with something then it really affects the other person's life but I and think that's that just, am I just explaining what relationships are though yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah. actually that. but like, I, th I think really that what unique. we do that I don't I don't see a lot of other couples doing is mm. that we don't live in each other's pockets in the same way like yeah. we do sp spend a lot of time together because we live together and we work together but it, like we're not like inseparable like yeah we, i think we people do think we are place. because we we well we do spend most of our time together yeah yeah but what i'm trying what i'm trying to say is like we place a big emphasis on like doing stuff separately and when the weekend comes it's not like oh what do you want to do together it's usually right i'm off gonna i'm off doing this do you mm. want to come no okay cool i'll see you this evening then and then we'll hang out in the evening or whatever mm. but i do think that i spend a lot of my time doing photography you spend a lot of your time writing and doing whatever else it is that you do for you. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever you so people love. do. <laughs> you do a lot of reading, you do a lot I've of writing. I've got a lot of hobbies. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Knitting, sewing, whatever it might be. That's kind of yeah. what I was getting at, like the millions of other things that Lena does. Um, so I think that we place a big emphasis on that. And mm. like, you're not going to be upset if I'm like, actually, I'm just going to be out this whole weekend. Yeah. You know, so I, th I think not living in each other's pockets in that way is very important. Yeah, and we, we go on holiday. We both, before we were together, we both enjoyed going on solo holidays and we still both go on solo holidays. My end I think we go on more solo holidays <laughs> than holidays together, to be honest. Yeah, but look, look at these legs. Look, just look, hold that. Would you go on a walking holiday with this? <laughs> I'm every, not keeping up. I'm dead. By hill two, I'm done. <laughs> every day is leg day when you're six foot yeah. three. Yeah, but we um we like stay like we like going to like youth hostels and staying in the same place and stuff sometimes. But yeah, we do. I quite like that that we 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 do have like a separation as well. So we get to spend loads of time together when we're working and when we're eating and all of the other stuff that you do in a working week. Mm. But because yeah. um, I think it's like, I don't know I think I'd really miss you now if we went if we went and had different jobs I don't know how our lives would be because I'd spend forty hours a week away from you and then I'd want to spend time with you but then I'd also want to go and do my other shit so I'd be yeah. like oh like yeah know, I don't, I don't know, know how, how I'd be I don't know how I'd be but... I think we've got used to it now because that's how our relationship started is both of us going and doing like eight hour days but not getting back till really late because of the yeah commute. I think that's something that we didn't say <laughs> earlier either is it isn't <laughs> it like we had already done you'd been working in the publishing industry like a decade and mm. i'd been working in my industry for six seven years or something by the time we started working together so i think that we had a good amount of experience of working elsewhere and also working separately um, yeah. from one another so i think we were able to bring that experience in to make it work a little bit better yeah totally think that makes sense yeah yeah totally so yeah i don't know but in terms of our relationship and how we keep it interesting I don't know, this is the most useless advice ever, but it's just not that deep. I th Only I just boring think... people get bored. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I mean, like, there's a million different types of relationship that you can have and different types of compatibility and different relationship styles and mm. this, that and the other. And I just think with us, we're just, we just got lucky and it, yeah. it's just like we really like each other and we also seem to work really well and our personalities gel. And it's not like we're free from conflict or issues but we just both want to solve them that's another thing i think i said this in a previous video but like if we have an argument 
we clearly both want to fix the argument. No, nobody not... wants to be in the argument. And I've argued with people who uh, we spend so long in the argument that I'm like, oh, you want to be here. Like, this well, yeah, is where yeah. you want to stay. You want to stay in the argument. Yeah, like ex-girlfriends of mine were like wanting to win the argument. Like that was the goal. And I would apologize and they'd be like, good. I'm glad you said sorry, you know? And, and, and there's and, no and like... like well, you know, with us, I'd say sorry. And you'd be like, thank you for saying sorry. I think that I feel sorry about these things too, you know? Mm. And so I'm like, right, we've met in the middle. And, and like, I... how do we stop this from happening? How did this happen? Yeah. We did like a little post-mortem on the argument. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, in conclusion, I think you've got to want it, as Jake Paul once said. The, uh, the concept of relationship advice is very confusing as well, because like, you own, you can only, I can give, I could only give somebody advice on how to be in a relationship with Craig. Because everyone's really different. So like, how would you... And that would be useless advice, because <laughs> I am a simp. <laughs> Right, should we do another question? Oh, yeah. are you still going? No, that was that was all I had to say. Okay, right. Next question. There's lots of questions asking me to talk about a bit about not wanting kids because people said that they haven't heard it so much from the male perspective. Honestly, again, I just don't feel like I have masses to say about it. I just don't... I, it's never appealed to me. I feel like when I was a teenager, teachers and parents and authority figures were always like, don't you fucking dare get a girl pregnant. <laughs> Don't you fucking dare. And it, they did and a I'm too like, good a yes, job. Yes, sir. And I never did. <laughs> um, so Yeah, I think it's something we bonded about when we were friends, though, because we were friends before we dated, and that is something that we both agreed on. Mm. We knew that before we started dating. So it wasn't like we yeah. had to have an awkward conversation a year in or something. And I just think, you know, whenever someone asks me in a sort of presumptuous way, like, so when are you having kids? Mm. Or I, I'm just like, well, I really strongly believe that kids should be wanted and I don't want them. So therefore, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to break my beliefs just to see how it goes. You know, the people that we know that do have kids, it seems like a lot of work and you've really got to want that. Yeah. To commit to something like that. It's not something that I want enough or I'm curious about enough to invest the amount of time and effort that inevitably it would take. And also, it's bloody hard enough looking after myself <laughs> and feeding Lena when she gets hungry. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah. I think, um, also, hilariously, because Craig is officially a PAYE, like, paid employee of me we, I had to give him a contract legally so I had to draw up this contract and the contract has to have paternity leave in it so basically legally if Craig went and impregnated some other person which I've I been would, known to do I would have to pay him three months maternity leave which I think would be absolutely hilarious <laughs> And also the great, a great like um, starting point for a book or something. Yeah, <laughs> I used to be like, I'm paying absolutely. my ex boyfriend's paternity leave. That's, that's excruciating. Can you imagine? But yeah, that's that's the funny like legal side of employing your partner is that there there are like there are you know when people are like, oh you're gonna get married and I'm like look I've already <laughs> there are we have so many contracts in place <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, that's the thing. That's another thing, isn't it? It's like we own a house together. We live in that house together. Mm. Um, I work for you. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's very, pretty locked in already. Yeah. If we were to separate, it would like the uh, the admin alone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, best of luck finding someone that's uh, as, <laughs> as as compatible for you in terms of and a good video editor. <laughs> yeah. And I think also, funnily enough, that that kind of leads into uh, a different uh, oh, yeah. question, which is like someone asked. In fact, a couple of people asked. How would you handle having a crush on somebody outside of the relationship? Um, which I thought was a really interesting one because something that I don't hear people talk about uh, very much is something that I believe, which is like, that's totally normal. That's, mm. if anything, that's to be expected. Here's the thing, right? I just feel like people are obsessed with like controlling the person that they're with. And it's like, you're, you know, I get the, the, you know, we're a monogamous couple, like, so I, I, I do get the, hey, we've made a commitment to one another that, like, we're not going to kiss anybody else. Mm. Um, but also, I think that there seems to be, from what I've seen on the internet, like, a lot of people are, like, fixated on controlling the thoughts of other people, the, of the person that they're mm. with as well. It's like, you're not allowed to have thoughts about anyone else and you've only got to have eyes for me. And I'm like, yeah, but that's just not realistic. You know, we're, we're humans. Yeah. And it's natural to to see someone and go fucking hell. Again, I feel like I'm uh, a broken record today, but it's just it's not that deep. Like for me, it's if you had intent, right? If yeah. you were trying to get closer to this person that you had a crush on, mm. and you were uh, actioning it, you were acting on how you felt. Then to me, that's that's where the line is. But like 
Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not the thought police. If you want to have a little crush on someone, it's it's like what they say in Fleabag, it'll pass. I don't so. think, yeah, I don't think I have, but I think it's just like sometimes you just get a bit giggly in front of certain people and you can't control it and it's not, mm. it's like a biological thing where you're just like, I'm just getting a bit giggly, I'm so sorry, I don't even know why. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, that's something that you can, you know, it's not like, you can't choose that. I don't like it's really embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's fine. So um, I, I guess like in conclusion, like how do you cope with the idea of Lena having a crush? Well, I don't know. That's, that's Lena's business. That's not my business. Like, <laughs> you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. But I think also, like, with you, if you, if you like, fancied another girl visually, I'd be like, fair play. Uh, but I'd also just be like, it's not like you're going to build what we have in, like, a day. Yeah, Do you know I'm, what not, I mean? I'm like, not intimidated. You, this isn't, isn't <laughs> like, like, I don't really believe in love at first sight or, like, instant connection. So I'm just kind of like, well, you can... You can do that and think that but it's not it's good it's obviously not going to be the an equivalent mm. option to me because we've already built so much yeah and i and i trust you and <clears throat> i feel like if you were like oh by the way i really fancy this boy uh, i'd be like mm. okay not to sound <laughs> cocky but i'm like i just i do think that we click very very well and so i just don't think i'd be intimidated yeah does, I, I think that sounds a bit I think like, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to phrase it right, isn't it? But Yeah, anyway. I imagine this will ruffle some feathers, but the bottom line is, it's fine. It's no big deal. You go ahead and have crushes on your <laughs> fellas. Look, I'm a girl who grew up on PS I Love You, I can't help it. <laughs> and river dance. <laughs> oh. Are you okay there, Cathy? Yeah, I'm just thinking about Michael Flatley. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Sustainability compromises when two partners disagree on sustainable habits. Um, I don't know. I feel like before Lino, I didn't think about it quite so much, but I, I guess I agree with everything that you do. I think a lot of my sustainable habits are also like as a side product, money saving habits. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the only part that we'd probably disagree on is that I like to keep things. Well, Just in it's, case it's, we it's need the things them. that you keep. I like to keep things too, but I like to keep things I'm actually going to use. Do you know what I mean? But I'm like, but if we don't keep it, it'll just go in landfill. So let's just keep it here. Yeah. <laughs> so I think there's definitely a balance of that because we live in a, um, we don't live in a huge house. So there's that. It's just easier to eat vegan or veggie meals because Vina is doing the same thing. And mm. I'm basically a vegetarian now. I probably have meat like once or twice a year. Usually when I'm stranded somewhere and there's nothing to eat and I'm like, battle stations must eat now. Mm. Um, so I'm not like a strict vegetarian, but I pretty much am a vegetarian uh, in terms of like sustainability. Yeah, it does annoy me when I see videos by like big YouTubers where, you know, they throw a lot of things away and they're wasteful and things yeah. like that. So I think I am on the same page. I just don't think that I intellectualise it and think about it as much as you do. You know, but I, I think regard... I, Sorry. That's right. Regardless of the planet thing, I think a lot of people don't like waste. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does <laughs> so wind me up a bit. It, yeah. So, so, I mean, in terms of like what I'm wearing now, this is Rapa Nui, this is Rapa Nui, which are both, uh, which is a sustainable brand based on the Isle of Wight. These are secondhand jeans. So I do yeah. think, I do think like... You, you do it by, almost by accident a little bit. Yeah. And I think also just men, men have been socialised to have a less of an interest in clothes and there's less options available for you and yeah, it's like there's less expectations on you to like buy loads of toiletries and like you know so I think yeah inherently I don't know if anybody else finds this if you're in a relationship like ours but inherently even though I'm the person who probably thinks about it more Craig's life is probably way more sustainable than mine <laughs> what can I say where's my crown because I'm a sustainable king okay right the next question is do I have any photography advice so for context I do a lot of photography in my free time. I am not a professional photographer. I sort of tried to go down that route, but it's not for me. I just prefer shooting he stuff He has won myself. a British Photography Award, though. I've actually won two, baby. <laughs> He's won two. It's um, not that you're not, and that is your main focus when you're not working. Mm -hmm. Like, while I'm writing and doing my knitting and stuff, you're like, I'm working on my photography project. Like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's pretty... It's your main... I'd say that's your passion slash your vocation. Yeah zero days off yeah uh, I, I do think about it a lot that's kind of my thing i side note have a youtube channel that i'm about to start uploading to again i think my first upload is actually premiering just after this video yeah i think that i'm going to do that we should too. do that yeah. yeah okay premiering just after this video so my youtube channel is on the screen now where i'm going to be talking about the project that i've been working on for six years which is a sort of England road trip kind of documentary inspired thing. Anyways, someone's asked about photography advice. 
because I do a lot of photography. Um, and obviously I cannot distill all the photography knowledge I have into mm. five minutes, but off the top of my head, things that are helpful to remember. Uh, something that I was taught by one of my lecturers is that if you can crack light and composition when you're taking a photograph of something, then you're best part of the way there. So light and composition, probably just like remember those two things. There's obviously way more to it, but if you're distilling things down, mm. light and composition, focus on them, and you're best part of the way there. Patience is a massively underrated skill in photography. I'm, I, I don't have time to elaborate, but I think patience, do not underrate patience. I've been shooting my current project for six years and it's going well, but I'm getting a little bit impatient and I need to... I didn't realise until I was with you how much photography is kind of like fishing. Like you just need to sit there for eight, it's like that's the kind of personality you need for it. It's yeah, like well, the, the kind of, the kind of stubbornness yeah. is there's like a stubborn patience to it where you just have to wait for something to bite. Yeah. Which I, I mean, pff, no thank you. <laughs> if you're out in the world photographing things and you're not actually in a studio where you've controlled all the light and the setup and stuff, then you're right, it is a little bit like fishing and some days you show up and it's just not the day. Yeah. And, and other days it happens immediately and you're like, okay. You know, so it can be incredibly frustrating and also incredibly rewarding, but uh, I love it. Don't worry too much about gear, just get something that is good enough. People get so fixated on what camera they have and what lens they have and, oh, I don't have the most recent Canon camera that's come out. It's not important. <laughs> You can do it on your opinion. phone for ages. There's a, um, a collection called Office Romance that's all done on a phone, isn't it? It's really Ooh, good. Yes, I have that over there, but yeah, it's maybe not... you can show it on screen. Yeah, I'll put it on screen. That is my photography advice. And the final question, I think. Ooh. Yeah, the final question is how have I retained a personal style while experiencing hair loss? Ah, um, this is funny because when he, when we first started dating, it was one of the first things I noticed was that your hairline was receding underneath your floppy hair. And I just thought, oh, we're not talking about that because you never mentioned it and I wasn't going to bring it up. So I was like, I guess, you know, I guess we're just not talking about it. And yeah. then during it's... the pandemic, which was four years into our relationship or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then... Oh, okay. You started noticing, oh, sorry. Realize. And, and then it, it, We're playing finish the then. sentence, I didn't realise. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice. I must have been receiving way before I met Lena. And I just didn't notice because it just wasn't even something that I entertained the possibility of. I, I just thought, ugh, my hair never sits how I want it to. Yeah. How annoying, I have very, very annoying hair. Turns out, it's receding, brother. But you, you, when we met, you were 22. Like, why would you be looking for that? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? I, I don't blame you. But it was also just funny because you were like, oh, my God, I think my hair's receding. And I was like, like um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did we not? Oh, OK. <laughs> so I, I, I suppose that's the context because I think when people talk about hair loss, it often sounds like, oh, one day my hair just all fell out. No, it had been falling out apparently for a long, long time. Just never noticed it. During the pandemic, I was looking to see how my hair would look if I shaved it because all the hairdressers were closed and I was like hmm that's definitely receding so I think I I think I um ripped the plaster a bit too fast with it mm. um and I did think about it for about a year but then I was just like fuck it I'm gonna do it shaved it bald and I've not lost the thread I promise uh, 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 this is gonna circle back to personal style I feel as though I've never been a particularly like stereotypically masculine kind of guy right Guys often have like a code of like, you talk about this and you act this way and these are the hobbies that you're allowed to have and uh, and these are the things that you're allowed to talk about. Um, and I must have missed the memo because, I don't know, it just never bothered me. It never bothered me that I wasn't like looking masculine or muscly or whatever it was. So I always leaned into that and I always leaned into like, I'm just a guy that's not trying to be super hardcore mm -hmm. masculine. And so when the, the hair loss thing happened, I was like, oh, okay, well, if I shave this, I'm going to look completely different. And actually, this is quite a typically masculine look. Bold. Yeah. Now I have a beard as well because I think it looks better with a beard. But and I think the thing that I found quite difficult at the beginning was after I had done it, after I'd ripped the plaster, I didn't recognise myself in the mirror. Mm. I looked like completely different. Um, maybe for context, I'll put on screen how I looked with hair so that you can see the difference. And I think that that's what I struggled with. And as a result, I definitely felt like my confidence was knocked for a little while. And I certainly wasn't really interested in wearing vibrant colours or 
you know, when I grew up, I wore like skin tight jeans. I still wear relatively skinny jeans now, but mm. they used to be like skin tight. And it, it definitely initially became a little bit of like, well, I don't actually want to stand out. I don't really want people to see this. I didn't like how I looked. So I thought that like other people inevitably also wouldn't like how I looked. But also after a few years, you just kind of get over it. <laughs> I don't really care anymore. It is what it is. It's sad and unfortunate, but uh, it doesn't hurt and a big percentage of men experience hair loss in their life and I just happen to experience it relatively early. I should also say, once you have shaved it, if you're experiencing male pattern baldness, it doesn't grow back in the same way. Like, if I were to grow this out now, like, it stops growing about here now and mm, at the front and it's here. it's thin here as Is well. That, it might even, I, I can't actually see, but yeah. like, it's, it's way, like, the thick bit stops really far back. So it's game over. Like, I, I'm not gonna grow it back out. Um, I also decided that I didn't want to use any of the chemicals and, you know, hair transplants. Well, I'm not going to go into that, but it's a no from me. Um, <laughs> so as a result, I felt like who I was when I looked in the mirror had shifted. And I definitely feel like I, I, I dress less, like with less uh, of an experimental yeah, edge. less arty. Not that I was ever experimental anyways, but do you know what I mean? More neutral, muted colours and stuff. And to be fair, I think that that has changed a little anyways. I think that even if I'd have kept my, care, kept my hair, I'm 30 now. I just like wearing stuff that's like comfortable, that makes me feel good. This is probably as bright as I go now, this purple that I'm wearing. But I think it's also that, like, right? however, however you dress now, you read very masculine mm. because of your hair. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because of your head. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's like you dress, you dress with that in mind, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I oh, know. I agree. I agree. I agree. And I, I definitely think different things suit you as well. So I think slightly smarter things just suit me better now. Mm. Um, I don't look so dishevelled as I used to. But I think the, the gender thing's really interesting because I have PCOS, so I have more testosterone in my body than the average woman, and therefore I can grow a beard. Yeah. And I can. So Put I. Put it there, like, brother. We. Um, <laughs> beard twins. <laughs> Twinsies. Um, and like that's really interesting in that I am constantly trying to fight the amount of hair that I can grow because I want to retain my femininity for whatever probably quite a fucked up reason mm. uh, and you are mourning the loss of your hair because of how it makes you feel about your gender and I think mm. that's just really in it's just a really interesting thing to think about when we think about how unreal gender is a lot of the time and how it's like mm. very you know everybody everybody has a, a kind of fluid relationship with it in some way. Mm. And um, I also think a big learning curve for me was realising that literally nobody cares. Like, nobody cares if I'm bold. <laughs> like, nobody. Yeah, a I think you felt like, like, huh, okay. And that's the extent of it. Like, it doesn't, doesn't affect anyone. Like, you, never, you never come home and are like, I saw a bold man today. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, you don't register it in other people. If anything, when I see bald men now out and about, I'm like, Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Do you all like wink at each other? <laughs> like, well, give I've, a high five. I've, I've never done that, but I definitely feel like there's a there's a mutual kind of he knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what's up. <laughs> you and I are not so not so dissimilar. <laughs> so. I think also like it's interesting in like uh, environments like garages and stuff when we've got to take the car and stuff. I like, do feel like people take you more seriously when you go, yeah, this car is, is broken. And they go, yeah. Whereas when you had your floppy hair, they were like, are you sure, little boy? Yeah, def <laughs> it's definitely a, a good point. I, I do feel like in typically male environments, people are, how do I say it? Like people always used to make jokes and stuff jokes that I didn't get and then it was kind of like way when I didn't get it like that used to happen all the time and I've noticed it might be a coincidence it might just be that I'm older as well but it seems to be around the time that I shave my head suddenly the jokes stopped and people take me seriously now or maybe you um, just live in the Midlands now and people are nicer it could be that too it could be that but <laughs> there was definitely it I'm was kidding. definitely around the same time that I shaved my head that I feel like other blokes don't take the piss out of me so much anymore or like, yeah. So, I don't know. Could be a coincidence, but just another interesting yeah. point. Do you have anything else to cover? I don't think so. I think we've been going for a I long, long time. I want to eat some food, Craig. What's the time? I'm is it, hungry. Is it lunchtime? It's lunchtime. I need, to, I need to give you a sandwich before you've become feral. I don't need to look at the time to know that it's lunchtime. I, my body knows. Oh my God, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> if you Can I recite it word for word? Um, <laughs> if you want. Thank you so much to the Gumption Club who tip me per video to ensure these videos keep happening. <laughs> very good. Is that how you say it? Yeah, very good. <laughs> if you like this video, you probably like 
longer, more chill videos. So Craig is going to start making some of those over on his channel where he's talking about photography and stuff. I'm going to start making them today. <laughs> so if you like that style of video, I think that you should go and check out his new video here. If you want to watch more of my channel, this is a video that I think you might like. Um, Pre-order half ass Human if you want one of these hats. Um, this, this could be your hat. <laughs> Frog Snog out. Frog Snog out. Ha <laughs> ha.